time But never give up, no giving Even when success seems out of sight The patient ones turn to him بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله الأمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أبو هريرة may Allah be pleased with him said that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم once said wealth does not decrease because of charity when you spend money your wealth does not decrease. And Allah increases his slave in honor when he forgives others. And no one humbles himself before Allah, but Allah will raise him in status. If we would like to go on and talk about this hadith, it would probably take us a long time. But what I wanted to talk about is forgiveness. The Prophet says, alayhi salatu salam, Allah increases his slave or servant in honor when he forgives others. Forgiveness is a beautiful thing. People today, when someone forgives others, they label him as weak and coward. They talk him out of it. Why do you forgive? Why don't you avenge yourself? Why did you do this? Why did you do that? Not knowing that it is one of Allah's beautiful attributes that He is forgiving the Almighty Allah. And forgiveness leads to not punishing a person for what he has done and to wipe off that sin. And that is why it is described in the Quran, it is He who accepts repentance from his servants and forgives sins and he knows what you do. This is Allah the Almighty. Our Prophet وسلم, was asked by Mother Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. And she said, oh Prophet of Allah, you see, imagine that I have noticed and I have seen the night of decree, Laylatul Qadr. What should I say? If I was successful in seeing that night, which Allah compared to more than 1,000 months of worshipping Him. So the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you should say, O oh Allah, you are all forgiving and you love forgiveness, so forgive me. This is how you supplicate to Allah. You always mention the name that is suitable for what you're requesting. So if you are supplicating against the enemies of Islam, you don't say, Oh Allah, you are most forgiving, punish your enemies. This does not come. And when you want to ask Allah to forgive you, you do not say, Oh Almighty, all powerful, forgive me. You have to say, the name or to use the attribute of Allah, the beautiful attributes that coincides, that go side by side with what you are asking for. And that is what the Prophet ﷺ taught Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. He taught her to say, Oh Allah, you are all forgiving and you love forgiveness, so forgive me. Forgiveness is a characteristic found in all messengers of Allah. Prophet Joseph, peace and praise be upon him, Yusuf, he was mistreated by his own siblings. They went to the extent that they threw him in a well in the desert, in the wilderness, and they abandoned him, not knowing what would happen to him. Yet, he forgave them after years and years. When they came to Egypt, not knowing that he was who he was, he forgave them after all they had done to him. Our Prophet ﷺ also forgave the people 
of Mecca. He forgave his enemies who got him out of his own town, of his own house, and forced him to migrate to Medina. He forgave those who killed his loved ones, who killed Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib, his uncle, and the rest of his companions. He forgave those who tortured and killed his beloved companions. Wahshi ibn Harb was an Abyssinian slave that was given the reward of freedom from slavery, providing that he executes, that he kills Hamza, the uncle of the Prophet ﷺ. He did this, but then later on regretted it and reverted to Islam and came to the Prophet ﷺ because people told him that the Prophet ﷺ would never ever do anything wrong to you if you accept Islam. So he came and he embraced Islam in front of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet, after he embraced Islam, he asked him about his name and he told him, my name is Wahshi. The Prophet recognized that this is the man who killed his uncle. Yet, he was a Muslim and Islam wipes everything that preceded it. And the Prophet forgave him, sallallahu alayhi wa wasallam. The Prophet forgave those who came to assassinate him. We were told that Umayr ibn Wahb al-Jumahi, he collaborated with Safwan ibn Umayyah in the Haram, near to the Kaaba, when they sat and they chatted, they talked together, no one was with them, and Umair's son was captured and taken prisoner by the Muslims in the Battle of Badr. So he wanted to go and pay his ransom, but he did not have money, and he wanted to free his son. So as they were talking, two disbelievers, Umair said to Safwan that if it were not for a debt that I have to pay and for children that I have and no one to provide for them, if it were not for those, I would have gone and killed Muhammad, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Safwan said, do you mean what you say? He said, yes, I do. So Safwan said, well, as far as your children, they're with my children. I'll take care of them until they grow up. As for your debt, it's done. I've paid it. So Umair went and dipped his sword in strong poison and immediately got his ride and traveled to Medina without disclosing this affair with anyone, without waiting. Immediate effect. So he entered the majlis of the Prophet ﷺ, the sitting area. And Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, looked at his face and he said, Prophet of Allah, this man does not come with good news. He intends to do bad things. I can see it in his face. So the Prophet ﷺ calmed him down and said, sit down, Umar, I'll take care of this. So the man comes and stands in front of the Prophet ﷺ with his sword in his neck which means that he's in a distance that allows him to kill the Prophet by just touching him. So the Prophet looks at him and says, Umair, what brings you? And he says, I come to free my son, whom you've taken as a prisoner of war after the Battle of Badr. So the Prophet says, والسلام, then what about this sword you have and you're carrying? And the man replied, trying to hide his true intention. And he said, these swords are worthless. They did not even do us any good on the day of Badr, on the battle of Badr. What good did they make us? At that moment, the Prophet ﷺ looked at Umair and said, this is what we will know, inshallah, after the break. So stay tuned. The patient words always Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome back. So, 
What did the Prophet say, alayhi salatu wasalam? The Prophet said, Umair, didn't you and Safwan ibn Umayyah sat last night close to the Kaaba and he told you that he will take care of your children and he will pay off your debt so that you come and kill me? Imagine the Prophet is saying this to his assassin and the man immediately said, I believe and testify that there is no God but Allah worthy of being worshipped and that you are his messenger. No one was with us and no one knew about this except the two of us. And definitely you are a messenger of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ forgave him. He did not execute him. While he could have done that, but he didn't. The Prophet ﷺ was so forgiving that he would not ever avenge himself as Aisha the mother of the believers said, may Allah be pleased with her. He would never avenge himself unless someone did a sin, then he will avenge it for Allah's cause. Peace and praise be upon him. The Prophet والسلام, as Anas tells us, was once walking and he was wearing a garment that was made of hard wool. And he was not wearing anything underneath. And this nomad comes from nowhere and he grabs the Prophet from his garment and he pulls him harshly saying that, O oh Muhammad, give me from Allah's money because you are not giving me from your own. So this is a beggar begging for money in this rude manner. And it says, I looked at the neck and shoulders of the Prophet ﷺ, and they were red because this hard wool garment affected it. The Prophet looked behind him, not startled, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not angry, smiling to the man, asking his companions to give him something for the sake of Allah, and so they did. This was our Prophet ﷺ, forgiving, and he pardons people. And what is the difference between pardoning and forgiving? In Arabic, it's called as-safh and al-afu. So pardoning is sort of forgiving, but on the surface. So you would not retaliate. You would not punish those who have done you wrong, but you will not forgive them with your heart. You will not punish them. You'll pardon them, but you do not forget this with your heart. While forgiving someone means that you'll not punish them and you'll not even remember that they had done you wrong at all. And this was mentioned in Allah's Quran, in the book of Allah, in the story of Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, and his cousin, Mustah ibn Uthatha, who slandered Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her his cousin's daughter and accused her of adultery which she did not commit and which was completely false and Allah revealed the innocence of Aisha in the chapter known as Surah An-Nur. So Abu Bakr in the beginning used to support Mustah because he was among the first to migrate to Medina and he didn't have any money. He was extremely poor so he used to give him a monthly allowance because he's he was his cousin and also because he was among the muhajireen but when he said what he said and when he had done what he had done abu bakr said by allah i will not give him a single iota i will not give him one single dirham or dinar because of what he had said and then Allah revealed the beautiful verses of the Quran where our Prophet went to Abu Bakr Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to Abu Bakr may Allah be pleased with him and told him Abu Bakr didn't you hear what Allah had revealed to me and he recited what translates to and let not those among you who are blessed with graces and wealth let them not swear to give any sort of help to their kinsmen 
those who were blessed by Allah should not swear that they would not give this money or that to the next of kin or their kinsmen. Allah the Almighty says, al masakin the poor, and those who left their homes for Allah's cause. Mustah can be called the three of these. He's a kinsman of Abu Bakr. He is among the poor and he left all of his homes and property for the sake of Allah. Allah goes on to say, let them, Allah is referring to Abu Bakr and those who have wealth and grace, let them pardon and forgive. Two things, pardon, that they should not inflict any form of punishment and forgive that they should not hold any grudge. Let them pardon and forgive. Do you not love Allah that he should forgive you? And Allah is of forgiven, most merciful. The minute Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, heard this verse, he said to the Prophet ﷺ, by Allah, I would love Allah to forgive me and to pardon me. I make you my witness, O Prophet of Allah, that I will not cut whatever I give and support and provide to my cousin Mastah ibn Athatha. Allah the Almighty has encouraged us to forgive. Although we know that it is an eye for an eye. This is universal. That when you punish someone for something wrong that he did for you, if it's equal in punishment, this is okay, this is permissible, generally speaking. Allah says, the Almighty, the punishment for an evil is an evil like thereof. But whoever forgives and makes reconciliation, his reward is with Allah. This is enough for a believer. When you know that your reward is with Allah, you should not even think of the reward because it's beyond your comprehension. It's beyond whatever you can imagine. So it's a well-known fact. It's an eye for an eye. But whenever you forgive and reconcile, Allah will reward you greatly. And the best form of forgiveness is when you forgive with an ability. Sometimes we forgive others but not because we're able to forgive, but because we are forced to forgive. For example, if someone does wrong to me and he does something that requires punishment, it's my God-given right to punish him. But if he's like 6'4 and weighs 350 pounds, it's a little bit difficult for me to get even. So in this case, I would probably forgive him. Not because I want to, because I have to. I'm forced to do this. So this forgiveness is not for the sake of Allah. This is incomplete. The complete and perfect forgiveness is when you are able to do this. The Prophet ﷺ tells us that whoever controls his anger at the time when he has the means to act upon it, Allah will call him before all of mankind on the Day of Judgment and will let him choose of the Hur al Ain, whoever he wants. What a beautiful reward. It shows us that it is complete and perfect forgiveness when you're able to act upon your anger. When you control your anger and when you oppress your feelings of revenge and vengeance, when you do this for the sake of Allah, Allah will reward you greatly. And among the worst reasons that prevent a person from forgiving are anger, vengeance, and arrogance. Anger, rage, a lot of us do things that they regret immediately after doing it. But at the time, the cause of doing it was pure rage. 
arrogance prevents us from forgiving. When someone tells you, why don't you forgive? And I say, why should I? He's way below my status. I'm a better person. I'm a noble person. This man has to be punished. He has to be humiliated. He has to know where he is and where I am. Arrogance. And also, the love of a vengeance. Just to have these feelings of hatred and enmity coming out of your heart being expressed in such punishment. A Muslim does not have this in his heart. A Muslim always forgives and pardons. And that is why we should be careful. It is said that beware of the pride of anger. When you're angry, you have this pride that makes you do things you regret. Beware of the pride of anger, for it leads to the humiliation of apology. And this is inevitable. To reconcile, you have to apologize for the wrong things you had done. So, instead of doing this, instead of going to that place, better, more, that you do not express your anger, you do not do accordingly. And who are the best people to forgive and to pardon? They are the closest to you. They are your wife. They are your children. They are your relatives. They are humans. They all have their shortcomings as you have your own shortcomings. We have to forgive them. They make mistakes as we do. And we have to be compassionate, merciful, forgiving, so that Allah would treat us in the same manner. We have to do this for the sake of Allah. We have to hope for them all the best, to know that what they have done was human weakness. They did what they did to us because they were humans. We should avoid anger and arrogance. We should avoid the feelings of a vengeance. And we should say, whatever they had done to me, I'll make it for the sake of Allah and I'll forgive. Knowing that treating people with such gestures, when you treat others with gestures of forgiveness and generosity, you are inflicting more humiliation to them than if you would punish them, than if you would reprimand them with harsh words or actions. They will feel touched. They will realize the amount of error they did in your favor. And this is all the time we have for today's program. Until we meet next time, fi amanillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The patient ones always 